You can bet this future home run king isn't giving a thought right now to a bat that might have been broken in some game years ago. Yet these little leaguers, like other teams and fans across the country, owe their playing field to things that were thrown out with the trash. It seems unlikely that this fitness fan is worrying much about what may happen to her running shoes someday. Yet the park that is her refuge from some of the hustle and bustle of urban living exists because of worn out sneakers and other cast offs that have found their way into junk piles. This farmer is more likely to be wondering what price he'll get for his hay than remembering that this land was once too steep to mow. It was a situation where every litter bit helped. For between this, and this is a complex, highly specialized, major industry few people ever think about. An industry solidly based on engineering and technology. A technology that can take broken bats and worn out sneakers and marginal fields and turn them into useful grasslands or into many different kinds of community assets as well as provide other benefits, all from the technology of trash. One of the most basic of all facts in the technology of trash is that there is more of it now than ever before. Every man, woman, and child on every street in America generates three to four pounds of waste per day. As the population increases, as handy disposable products become the norm, as convenience foods with individual stay fresh packaging continue to gain in popularity, as residential trash mounts, so apparently does our attitude of out of sight, out of mind. Going, going, gone, and soon forgotten. All the lawn clippings, hedge trimmings, leaf raking, all the defunct refrigerators and sagging sofas and not worth repairing stoves that boost residential waste alone into the hundreds of millions of tons per year nationwide. But residential waste is only part of the problem. Apartments, motels, hotels, hospitals, schools, offices, shopping centers, and manufacturing plants also contribute to the refuse that communities must deal with. And it is this disposal problem, community solid waste only, that we're looking at. A problem that mounts constantly at a tonnage increase of 2% or more yearly. So that by the year 2000, there'll be half again as much of the stuff to deal with. Keep in mind that it is illegal to mix hazardous wastes with ordinary residential, commercial, and industrial refuse that communities must find a place for. And that brings us to a second basic fact in the technology of trash. Hundreds of millions of Americans agree that they do not want the place where their community disposes of garbage and other solid wastes anywhere near them. Which makes a sign like this surprising. The occasion, an open house at a sanitary landfill serving a large metropolitan area as well as several adjoining counties. The mayor, along with other community leaders and townspeople, is here to be updated on the changes technology has brought to solid waste disposal. 
Well, Dave, my big concern is the environment. Is this place polluting the groundwater, and are there rats out there spreading disease? Well, concerns like yours were typical when there were open dumps. But thanks to the EPA, open dumps are outlawed. What I'm going to show you today is a sanitary landfill, something engineered to protect the environment. Here, let me show you. When landfill is complete... Engineering is the key word in the technology of trash. Months of planning testing and engineering must precede the spreading, compacting, and covering operations that constitute a sanitary landfill. And continuous monitoring and supervision are required to ensure that public hazards and pollution are avoided, both during the operation of the facility and following its close. Yeah, it looks good. Great. What I want to know is, why do you bury it? Couldn't a lot of it be burned and turned into energy? Well, it could be. There are several types of incinerators that handle trash, and this type of technology is becoming more common. That technology is here now for some communities. Incineration of solid waste does yield heat to generate electricity or to make steam for other uses. But such incinerators are expensive. They cannot deal with some refuse, such as large appliances. And what they do burn leaves solids, which in the end must be buried somewhere, so that the community still needs a sanitary landfill. The electricity such incinerators help generate is transmissible over any available power network. But steam is a poor traveler. It cannot be transported far before its energy potential is gone. A metropolitan area considering trash incineration should start with plans for the distribution of the resulting energy to industries or power companies on a long-range basis. While the scarcity and rising costs of sites suitable for sanitary landfills may eventually force some communities to consider incineration, it will probably be many years before the technology of burning trash becomes cost-effective. Taking a distant view, looking into the future, some communities, particularly those with large completed landfills, can benefit from another technology linking energy and trash. Methane gas, generated by the organic materials buried in such sites, is similar to natural gas and can be tapped and marketed in much the same way. Methane recovery is a denial of the computer operator's rule, garbage in, garbage out. Garbage that went in here is coming out now as an important resource, energy. When a community decides to evaluate a landfill methane recovery project, it should be aware that this technology is not inexpensive. Ideally, the provisions for methane recovery should be engineered into the landfill from the beginning. In fact, the methods for dealing with landfill migration control must go into the planning for any sanitary landfill. For any new facility, there are some project steps that must be followed for successful project development. The first and most important of these is landfill testing. The site must be tested both for gas volume generation and gas location. Then comes your process design, engineering, construction, and fi finally, plant startup. You don't just bury garbage today and have methane to sell tomorrow. Finally, the landfill developer has to consider a careful market research. A utility customer or a local industrial customer must be identified. A utility, because of the current supply situation, may not always be able to accept the methane. So this technology, while it works very well in most cases, may not work at all in some others. Do you do any type of recycling here? Well, yes and no. We've, we've done some segregating heavy metals in the past, such as uh, refrigerators, car bodies, stoves, stuff like that, hoping the price of metal would go up enough to defray the cost of sorting them out. But no, we're not doing anything in resource recovery at the landfill right now. Recycling efforts have been most effective in areas with active programs for voluntary separation at the household level. 
for the setting aside of glass, paper, and metals, especially aluminum, by private individuals who may need the help of strong-limbed volunteers to get the materials to recycling centers. Even so, fluctuating markets for recycled matter often rule out resource recovery as a dependable means for disposing of significant amounts of trash. Okay, folks. The fact that alternative methods can handle everything we need to dispose of, plus the present cost of some of those alternative methods, means that the sanitary landfill will continue to be the most economical and environmentally safe solution for many communities. You may already know something about the geology around here, but anyway, the water table is not very far down. That means this area is going to have to be lined with clay. Some of the operators use plastic so that none of the rainwater that seeps through the refuse gets into the water supply. Geology is not the only concern of today's often young, often college-trained landfill operator who makes sure daily operation goes according to the engineering plans. From metropolitan transfer stations where the residential pickups are stockpiled so that local haulers can get back to their routes quickly, the day's accumulations are continuously compacted for transfer to larger, more economical carriers that mean fewer time and energy consuming trips to the landfill. Every detail has been worked out to give a new twist to the old adage so that when the trash gets to its final resting place, it will be into the site, out of mind. Dumping is confined to a narrow working face, and the material is spread up a gentle slope to keep uncovered refuse to a minimum. What goes in, stays in. Scavenging is prohibited, not only to permit an uninterrupted flow of vehicles to the working face, but also to help prevent accidents. Immediately, the material is compacted as densely as possible, using up to five passes with the heavy machine. The more thoroughly the trash is compacted, the less space it takes up, extending the life of the landfill. Compacting also gets rid of most voids where flies or vermin might breathe. It presses into place loose items, such as paper, reducing the possibility of wind-blown litter. And it levels the surface so that less dirt is needed to cover the trash, saving money on dirt handling. At the end of every working day, every working day, a layer of dirt is spread in place to create one part of a completed cell just one of many cells that will make up the finished landfill. When all the cells are topped with a much thicker final layer of dirt and seeded or landscaped. If it seems an easy matter, just lease some land, spread trash on it, compact the trash, and cover it up, it's not, as you will discover when your community becomes involved with the problem of finding a place to put a sanitary landfill. The biggest problem is always getting the necessary permits to get started. But to secure them, you must have the answers to the really important questions. What's the drainage pattern? How is the prevailing wind going to affect the adjacent properties? Is there enough soil of the right type provide cover? 101 questions that only a consulting firm can answer reliably. But remember, consultants are available to the community in the form of radio appearances, television, newspaper, and appearances before citizen groups. Equally important is to become involved yourself. The problem of solid waste disposal is not going to go away. 
whether it's handled by a local governmental agency or a private waste management firm. Either way, your taxes will be affected. The shortest haul from our area of waste generation. And you should be there, asking questions and helping come up with answers. To the community. Uh, what environmental effects do you expect? The landfill is designed to minimize the impact on the environment. The roads are paved to prevent blowing dust. The site is fenced to prevent any blowing paper. There's a lining under the site uh, to prevent any water from getting to the groundwater. And the waste is covered daily so that rats and flies don't have access to the waste. What kinds of waste will be accepted? It will be residential and commercial industrial wastes. Wastes such as liquid waste or hazardous waste will be prohibited from acceptance at the site. What will the land be used for after it's finished? It's designed to be a park after it's finished. A portion of it will be used for a nine-hole executive golf course. Well, I don't play golf. Is, there, is it going to be used for anything else, for people like me? It'll also have jogging trails. And Too often. The most elementary questions don't get asked until it's too late. For instance, are there suitable roads leading to a proposed site? And do those roads avoid the square corners, congested areas, low overpasses, or rickety bridges that could become bottlenecks? Solving the problem of finding a site may be simplified for communities with quarry operations in the vicinity, at the time rock removal began, there was probably no thought given to what to do with the hole in the ground that would remain after the rock was out. Now these pits and piles of overburden that once covered the rock seem made to order for holding and covering the oddments that no longer have a useful place in society. Now with proper engineering, useless junk and useless excavations are being brought together to create useful land. The capacity of many quarries is so great that they may be able to contain 40 or 50 years worth of trash. But eventually this land can be restored for agricultural or recreational uses. Children will slide down man-made slopes. Hikers will enjoy the serenity of winding trails. And picnickers will seek out what is now the ignored or lowly regarded landfill. And that's where the fishing lake is going to be. Wait, wait, I want to see this. I'll tell you what, it's all over this landfill area. It's going to be one of the most popular spots for miles around. Hey, uh, uh, can I say something? This fella talks and talks and talks about uh, what's going to happen. And all that stuff's fine. It's, it's good to know. Uh, but I want to talk about him and, and what has happened. Now, all of you know that I, I own a business not too far from here, and I was anti-landfill. Anti-landfill? Uh, you, you, you notice when you uh, approach this place, uh, if it's neat as a pin, everything picked up. You, you would expect him to have it that way when, uh, when he's looking for company. But it's neat as a pin around here all the time. Clean up men out there every day, clearing away what catches in the fences that he put up to keep wind-blown stuff off of neighbor's property. He talks about what this place is going to be someday. Well, I'm here to tell you that it's a whale of a lot more popular with me now than I ever thought it would be. This guy does a necessary job in a completely businesslike way, and he's a good neighbor to boot. Well, I won't argue with that. <laughs> yeah, I don't agree with that at all. And that's the best of the basics on solid waste disposal today. Technology has brought forth a new generation of experts to deal with a necessary service. Experts concerned with protecting the environment. With using engineering principles and cost-cutting efficiencies to tap new sources of energy. And to reclaim useless lands. And with it all, being responsible neighbors while getting the job done. The job of getting rid of our garbage. That's what the technology of trash is all about.